What is up everyone in the Ripple and XRP community? Ripple Van Winkle is back Tuesday morning. Good morning to everyone out there listening to this fine voice. You could have been so many other places, but you have decided to stop what you're doing and turn on my video. Hopefully you got the notification. Hopefully your bell is on. Hopefully you are a member of this channel. If not, I am not sure why you aren't. Up first, as always, I gotta plug my Twitter. Make sure you give me a follow, XRP News underscore. We broke 20,000, that was the goal by the end of the year. We nailed it before October, before Q4 has even kicked off. What a great feeling, everyone. Make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. 58% of you that are watching this video, listening to my voice have not hit that subscription bell. We are trying to hit 10K YouTube subscribers by the end of the year. I know we can get there. We are on pace. We are well above pace. There is absolutely no reason we couldn't. Let's do this. Let's get into the price. What do we see first? We see XRP's up almost 8%, sitting at 0.245 cents. Bitcoin has come down just a little bit, 10,762. The total market caps are 346 billion with the Bitcoin dominance sitting right around 57 and a half percent. Folks, I don't know. I don't think things are gonna turn out well here coming up soon. Bitcoin can't break 11.2. That is such a key number, such a key barrier. We cannot get past it. We are stuck in this 10, seven range, you know what happens. For those of you who have been in this market for the past two, three, four years, you know what happens when Bitcoin just floats around a certain range for a long period of time. The price comes flying back down. I don't wanna see it, you don't wanna see it, but we might be seeing it. There is a possibility of Bitcoin going back into the $9,000 range. What does that mean for our beloved XRP? It means we will lose another couple of cents. Time is going to tell. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not telling you what to do. I am just telling you of one possible outcome. Obviously, the other possible outcome that can happen is that Bitcoin pushes up to $15,000 levels and starts flirting with its all-time high by the end of the year. XRP, we're looking to get to $0.50 cents to a dollar by the end of the year. That's another possibility that might come out of this. It is just so early to tell. Everything's floating. I don't think anything's gonna happen until after the election. Hang in there, people, hang in there. I'm there with you, we're in this together. Let's jump over to the news. Listen, there is so much news today. Mike Manfield absolutely killed it. My tweet, my Twitter, Twitter, my Twitter feed was absolutely hammered from him. So much great news and it all involves Ripple partners. The information I am about to show you, I can bet that most of you have not seen it before. I'm going to tie everything in beautifully. You're going to thank me at the end. This is going to be one of the better videos that I have ever created. This is going to be an eye-opening experience. I'm going to spit through this information so fast. You don't even need to 2x me. We're just going to fly. It's going to be smooth. Your eyes are going to be open. You are going to say, thank you, Mr. Van Winkle. And there goes the cat crying to try to get into my bedroom again. Like clockwork, people. You should expect that one by now. So up first, and make sure you give him a follow, at Michael Manfield, M-A-N-F-I-E-L-D. Check this one out. Ripple's partner. According to the agreement, eBury joins Nexi Open. Nexi partner banks will be able to offer their clients the full suite of eBury services, including international cash management, FS risk management, imp import, export, lending. So we jump over, here's the article, came out for, for an extra 36 minutes ago. eBury joins Nexi Open Banking Ecosystem. Nexi, the leading Italian pay tech and digital payments, signs a partnership with eBury, one of the world's leading fintech companies providing global transaction banking services to businesses. According to this agreement, eBury, founded in 2009, and with offices in 20 countries, including Italy, joins Nexi Open. Nexi's partner banks will be able to offer their clients the full suite of eBury services, including international cash management, FS risk management, and import export lending. Why is this so big? Because we date back November 2019. Santander has bought a majority stake in a UK fintech firm for 350 million pounds as it looks to boost its growth through new ventures. The Spanish banking group has purchased a 50.1 stake in eBury as part of its digital focused expansion 
plan. Who would have ever guessed Santander was going digital? Perhaps that's why OnePay FX created. Perhaps that's why Santander has been in bed with Ripple for so many years. As we scroll down, it says Santander said that 70 million pounds in equity from the deal will be used to support eBury's plan to expand into new markets such as Latin America and Asia. Where have we heard from Ripple that they were looking to expand? Latin America and Asia. Who is going to be the big bank running or, or getting them all the liquidity that they need? Yes, that is Santander. And now they have this UK fintech firm under their belt that Santander purchased about a year ago. And then we move on over. Mike Manfield, another one. Company announcement, Volpay collaborates with Noom for corporate card insurance. Here's the article coming from Finextra two hours ago. Singapore-based startup Volpay and global fintech infrastructure plateau Noom announced a partnership today that will improve corporate card ins ins insurance experience for companies. Individual corporate cards will be issued to the employees and companies will be able to configure those cards with a real-time tracking software and mobile application. The partnership with Numo will ensure that the clients are enabled to pay anywhere around the world with Volpay's corporate card. The spending pattern would be seamless with the integration of Volpay's card with Noom. So why is this so big? Well, first, I'm gonna shoot you over here to a Ripple customer case study. Noom, who's foregoing new partnerships to open the doors in Southeast Asia. Through Noom's use of Ripple in the Philippines and Mexico corridors, we have been able to eliminate pre-funding requirements and offer faster remittances at a lower cost. How in the world do you think they're doing that, people? Can you say XRP or can you say on-demand liquidity? I don't care which one you say, they both point back to the greatest digital asset in the world. So why is this so important? This whole partnership with Volpe and Noom, I'll tell you why. Noom, integrated with Google Pay and Visa. This is from xrpwrightnow.com. You know whose website it is? Yes, it is mine. I covered this article July 29th. I'm not gonna read this whole thing to you. I'm gonna sum it up for you. Noom integrated its wallet with Google Pay and Visa. They have Visa branded debit cards. They integrate with Google Pay for contactless payments for the end users. They simplify payroll payouts or distributions, and they can manage program security in one place, including card lock, unlock geolocation, and cardholder permissions. So that's great, right? Noom integrated with Google Pay. And what did we just hear? Volpay and Noom, let me pull the article back up. Volpay collaborated with Noom for a corporate credit card. Everyone will get an individual corporate credit card. Why is that so big? Who's backing this credit card, people? Look at the picture on the screen for those of you who are not looking. Volpe, backed by Visa. It is a Visa card. It is not a Discover card. It's not a Capital One card. It's not a MasterCard. It is a Visa card. Why did Volpe patch, uh, partner with Noom? Two reasons. Noom is knees deep with Ripple and with on-demand liquidity into multiple corridors. Noom also just partnered with Visa to brand out their credit cards. Now you got Noom and Volpe forming a partnership using Visa. Think about it, look around. I don't need to spell this out for you any bit more than it already is. Visa runs on Ripple, no doubt about it. It is a white label service. I have been calling this for the longest time. When this news is finally broken, when it finally comes out, I want you all to say, I remember Mr. Ripple Van Winkle told us about that. Now you have one Ripple partner partnering with another firm, Volpe, to get onto a Visa-backed corporate credit card that will be passed out to individuals as stated in the article with the source directly coming from Volpe. People, do you not see what is going on? Ripple's partners are making partners to make the network bigger to bring all these partnerships together because everyone is going to run on Ripple. That is the way it works. That's the way it's going to work. XRP is going to bridge everything in this world. Visa is, is going to run. Well, Visa does run, but Visa will be announced that they are running a white label service for RippleNet. No ifs, ands, or buts. I am telling you, I am calling it. I have covered it so many times. Let's keep going. Here's a quick minute video. This is from the Cryptic Poet. RippleNet member Airwallex 
one of the original members, CEO, talks about international payments. He doesn't even have to say it. We already know. Airwalks is now valued at $1.8 billion, people. Sound is jacked up. Here we go. Have a listen. A minute long. It's really around some of the big pain points that businesses face when they're trying to make international payments. There's really three things you can look at. One is um, speed of your, your payment, um, transparency, but mostly it's cost. You know, companies need to understand what they're spending on international payments, and the traditional routes of spending money or receiving money are not transparent. What we offer is a one integrated platform, lower cost, transparent, and fast speed. So, how does Airwallex actually do all of those things, like cut the time to payment? cut the costs. What Airworks has built is, is really a technology platform. So we're connecting banks around the world through one platform. So rather than using a swift payment through your traditional bank network, which may go through three or four different banks, we're directly connected to those banks in each country. So it's much faster. As soon as you receive your money in one part of the world, you can pay out via our bank locally on the other side of the world. And because we're a technology company, we have lower overhead than official from Water Bank, um, so we can pass the savings directly on to our clients. Well, there you have it. Now listen, a lot of people are going to say, but we don't see any liquidity. We don't see XRP being used. It's taking a long time to build out the network. I just want to give you my opinion on this. I don't think it's taken a long time to build out the network. I think the network is coming along beautifully. I think if we actually knew all the partners, and I'm sure it's over 400 at this point, Brad Gollinghouse did say they were on pace two to three per week once again. I do believe we're over 400. What I think is taking a while is actually to get everyone switched over to source liquidity via XRP. I think the network's are lining up. The X current or just the messaging part of it of RippleNet I think is there. I think it's growing out tremendously, but I think onboarding people to on-demand liquidity is kind of the hiccup right now. Will they eventually get past that? Yes, absolutely. Once we get a clarification or we get some more regulations, I think I think we're gonna be fine. I just taking a little bit longer. I know people are impatient. I'm impatient, you're impatient, we're all impatient. I get it. I definitely get it. So I say 2020 is supposed to be the year of the digital asset. Don't get me wrong, it's still, we still have a whole nother quarter left. Stuff can happen, a lot of stuff can happen. This whole market can be turned upside down with one announcement, that's all it takes. It's all it takes. So, just hang tough, take a step back if you need to, we're gonna be just fine. Let's keep on moving. And then, from Michael at Val5Links, five, five Stephen Granger, Executive Vice President at MasterCard, says solving these frictions will allow businesses to create more accurate forecasts. The problem we're trying to solve is the lack of predictability and certainty. He goes on to this article right here. The MasterCard Vice President is talking about removal of cross-border frictions that will help improve forecasting. This is where XRP and on-demand liquidity comes in, people. You know how much you're sending, when it's going to get there. It's going to be super cheap. You're going to save a ton of money. You can help forecast the money that you're going to spend next quarter or even next year. MasterCard knows what is up. That's why MasterCard got into a bid war over Earthport with Visa because they both wanted that Ripple slash XRP slash ODL connection. Earthport is a monster. There are so many avenues open through there. Let's keep it going. And for Michael Manfield again, he even said it. Ripple's partners are making moves today. ACI Worldwide and MasterCard have agreed to collaborate. Let's pull it up. Here's the article. As it loads, thing that are right here. Let's get Finaxtra going. ACI Worldwide and MasterCard agreed, agreed to a collaboration 30 minutes ago. ACI Worldwide. Fun fact, ACI is right around the corner from where I live. A leading global provider of real-time digital payment software and solutions and MasterCard, the global multi-rail payments technology company, today announced that they will partner to provide a wide range of real-time payment solution globally. 
They will, they will initially collaborate to offer best-in-class central infrastructure payment localization and access to solutions to central banks, scheme operations, financial institutions, payment service providers, and other organizations launching real-time payment initiatives. The real-time account-to-account payments market continues to quickly expand. Prime time for real-time, a recent study analyzing global real-time account-to-account payment volumes and forecasts across 30 global markets projects a compound annual growth of 23.4%. La da dee dee da. So the important thing about this, ACI, which does offer RippleNet, has partnered with Master, MasterCard to provide a wide range of real-time payment solution globally. Everyone needs to get onto some kind of real-time payments network before they can have them source liquidity via XRP. That's how it's gonna work. First comes real-time payments, then comes real-time settlements. A before B, remember that. That's how I see it, that's how I believe it's going, it's going to go down. I think we are in store for a lot of good news to come today. This was all hot off the press this morning, thanks to Michael Manfield. Give the man a follow, follow Michael Val Five Links, follow XRP Crypto, follow all those guys that give out phenomenal information. That's going to do for this video. Let me know your comments below. I will have all comments answered today up until about 11 o'clock. Because I got nothing else to do. No, no, plenty to do. Just playing. Wash your damn hands. Be nice. Be safe. Kind to each other. Ripple Van Winkle is out of here.